Hi, it's Bill the Handyman. Today we're looking at a Kenmore, another heavy duty. So what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about converting it over to propane and then troubleshooting it. Kenmore gas dryer. First thing we want to do is take these two screws off here. Take your lint chute out, your lint your lint filter out pull those two screws just take a flathead screwdriver right about here pop this up and then right here as well man once you've got the top up You have to have a nut driver or something similar. Take these little nuts off here. There's one there and one there. Okay, once you've got the screws off, you can just pull up on the front panel. You see the little holes here and the clips here it just pulls right off you lift up and pull out <clears throat> and make sure that the unit's unplugged for now and you can stick your hand back in here <clears throat> and then pull this belt off <clears throat> and once you've got the belt off then you can pull the barrel out. I usually just grab it here. Pull it out. Okay, so get your meter out and take a look at it. Now this one here is already converted to propane. As you can see, it has the larger head on the top of the valve here. The, the regular gas uh, head here is about half the size. And you can usually tell you got a quarter inch. The, t the regular gas top, this thing screws off. The regular gas top is... Uh, about a quarter inch. This one is about a half inch, almost an inch. This is the propane one. <clears throat> and then you'll have to change this jet in here, basically this uh, brass jet right in there. You have to change that one. The propane ones are a little bit smaller than the natural gas ones. Okay, so when you take this flame jet thing out this part here when you take that all that valve out make sure the gas is shut off and then you can stick a wrench around this nut here and then that way is tightening it so this way is tightening it and this way is going to be And that way is tightening, this way is loosening, this way is tightening, that way is loosening. And so, this is actually the propane jet that goes on cap, that goes on the top here. This spring loaded kind of arm that goes down there and pushes on the diaphragm, the valve, the valve diaphragm. So I put the regular jet back in or the cap back in uh, just to test it on natural gas. For a second here. Uh, this one is actually already done. 
and usually when I do this I'll disconnect it here and I believe this is a reverse thread nut here and disconnect it and then loosen your screw here right there and then <clears throat> take these out and then once you've loosened this you can pull the whole bow burner assembly out and then you'll have to take this top flenum thing off to get in here and change that jet right there so but you got to be very careful because this is the igniter and if you tap the igniter on the side of this you're going to break it you don't want to touch this igniter because the oil on your hands may cause it to prematurely fail so be very careful with the igniter okay this is this is your gas valve <clears throat> here's your igniter once again you have to be very careful with this just imagine this thing made out of eggshells so if you keep that in mind then you probably won't break it and usually you can tell if these things are bad you can see a crack in them sometimes and there will be a white there'll be that white kind of crust around where the crack is this one looks good actually it's a little worn but it's still usable and once again when converting you can see this this one here has the smaller this this is the natural gas setup here this has a smaller cap this is only about a quarter inch cap and so the other one's about a half inch and <clears throat> and then this this is your jet you gotta swap that center brass thing right in there so you basically you have to take this thing apart these two screws off and this top part will come off <clears throat> and then you can stick a wrench in there and take that jet out and swap it. Um, the natural gas jets are bigger than the propane jets. The propane jets are probably half as small as the as this natural gas jet. And then also on the uh, flame sensor got to be careful with that because normally when it's plugged in one of those wires is hot so you might get bit if you touch it and then and this one here if you try and pull these off sometimes what happens is these things will fall apart on this one the connection on this one just came off and this has happened to me quite a few times this is actually a weak point in the flame sensor it's basically where they sort of like rivet the connection on. You can see that one's it's intact. It's got the connection on it. This one is broke off. So Next thing we're going to do is check a couple things. So basically you get your meter. You want to check these coils here. And so these coils basically should show continuity. You set your meter on. Continuity. If you have a tone continuity indicator Set that. and so basically we're looking for continuity continuity across these two kind of tricky to do with one end So this one's got continuity. So 
this one <clears throat> is theoretically good. And so we're looking for continuity across these three. So across the two far ones, we're looking for continuity there. We do have continuity there. And we're looking for continuity between the middle one and the side ones. <clears throat> and we got continuity there. And that one's looking good too. So the next thing we're going to check is the flame sensor. And what I like to do is I'd like to leave things unplugged here. Make sure your timer shut off. And there's a little disclaimer there for you. If you can see that or not. Some of these will have a schematic on them. Some of them don't. <clears throat> Over the years, I've sort of notice what to look for and I don't normally have to go through the schematic there's typical scenarios uh, at least 50% of the time <laughs> and so basically I got the motor I got the door switch open so I've got the door open I've got the timer off I've got most of these things here disconnected got the igniter disconnect and then the igniter you can check the same way you're just looking for continuity across the connections um, if you got some continuity here you got a good igniter and I'm pretty sure this igniter is good so the next thing we're going to do is check the flame sensor so once again, be careful, unplug your unit, because these wire, one of these wires is normally hot when you do this, so you don't want to uh, put power through your meter. So this one here is showing continuity. So that means that this one is good, okay? But there's an intermittent problem with this thing firing up, so what may happen is once these coils heat up then they won't work correctly that's that's a possibility so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna fire it up a couple of times and then take a reading from these coils and watch and see if they open up okay so we've got the connections all connected back up here and we have the door switch connected and the door is shut and we're just going to fire it up a couple of times and see if we can duplicate the scenario where it, it won't light the uh, light the igniter We just set it on heat. Okay, so basically there's a sequence that happens here. First the igniter will blow, and then it will tell the flame sensor that it's hot, then it will open up the valves. What I'm going to do is, okay, so you hear that click, normally that's when the gas would start to flow. What happened, and you can hear a click, you can sort of hear a slight hum. It sounds like it's coming from this motor. This is actually a newer retrofit motor. And so what we need to do is, We need to let the flame sensor cool down a little bit here or it'll tell the igniter to ignite again. It takes about a minute or so. You might hear a click when it cools down.
And there's another disclaimer for you. Yeah, I just heard the click, so. Watch it fire up again. Okay, once again, you see the igniter glowing, and you'll hear the click of the valves. The flame sensor will tell the valves to open. Hear that click, that's a distinctive click you should hear. If you don't hear that click, then it's likely one of these coils is bad. Some of the newer uh, machines have a double coil pack where you have to buy both of them. This is a single single coil where you can replace one if you want to. So let's try it again. This time I think I'm going to hook the gas up to it. I'll watch it and see if I can see if I can duplicate that. No start scenario again. Let's try it again. Hear that, that noise? That rattle? That is a bad flame sensor rattle. So that that's an intermittent problem. When they start to rattle like that, then it's time to replace them. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to replace that and then hook the gas line up and see what happens. Okay, we got the new valve. You want to try these things a couple times to make sure that the coils don't open, fail. And so, yeah, you got to try it twice, three times to be sure. Watch that thing open, let the gas shoot out there. Recycling Enterprises, PO Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95501. And if you need any help, you can contact me, 707-445-1591. And that's Pacific Time, 926. You can also send me an email at EurekaRecycler at Yahoo.com or Z underscore Fixitman at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching.